Rudyantra, an innovative heart device developed by engineers at IIT Kanpur, could soon save the lives of patients awaiting a heart transplant at a tenth of the cost of the currently available options across the world. Hidyantra is a small battery-operated pumping device that is implanted just below the heart. A rotating motor helps pump the blood through the body, giving the patient a new lease of life. Hello and welcome to The Print. I am Mohana Basu, Assistant Editor, and we are at IIT Kanpur tracking a very exciting story about uh, the artificial heart that the Institute has developed. And with us, uh, we have the PI of that team, Dr. Amitabh Bondhupadhyay, who has agreed to give us some time and talk about this project with us. Thank you so much for joining us today, sir. Uh, you know, this uh, this device is something that targets uh, a population uh, that needs heart transplants, and uh, as we know, that is uh, sometimes that can get very tricky, and which is where this device comes into the picture. So, uh, Dr. Pondhapadhyay, please tell us about how uh, this project started, you know, uh, what is, uh, what was need uh, that was uh, felt at the time? Yeah, so, you know, like, uh, as you know, IIT Kanpur is starting its own medical school and uh, the medical school R&D efforts has already started and uh, I was making a presentation to the advisory board of the medical school about the R&D vision of the medical school. And in our advisory board, Dr. Devi Shetty is a member. Uh, and just as a prelude about uh, to showcase our uh, capabilities to these external members, I was talking about all the projects we have uh, recently executed, including the ventilator project, uh, which uh, you know was featured in the print earlier, uh, the oxygen plant project, and all of that. So, Dr. Seti, uh, I was emphasizing upon our ability to execute projects rapidly, complicated projects rapidly. So, Dr. Seti said, you know, Amitabh, if you can do all of these things. Why don't you make an artificial heart? Um, so then he elaborated that uh, when there are patients with terminal heart failure, meaning the heart can no longer pump sufficient blood into the body, then there are only two options. One is to get a donor heart. And donor heart, you know, people stay on waiting list forever because the number of donor hearts is much less than the actual need. Or you can uh, give them a pump. The, uh, artificial pump, mechanical pump uh, implanted outside the heart and uh, that this uh, mechanical pump uh, it is uh, not an innovative product by any stretch of imagination like uh, from 1920s people have been experimenting with it and uh, there are uh, now commercially available uh, artificial heart in the market there is total artificial heart and there is LVAD left ventricular assist device that we talk about, like uh, that is the focus of our project. But these commercially available LVADs uh, cost almost a crore piece, which is difficult for even the upper middle class Indians to afford. So, uh, therefore, in Dr. Shetty's word, if a solution is not affordable, it is not really a solution. So, the challenge was can we make an artificial heart which will be affordable? And uh, when he uh, through this challenge in front of us, our director, Professor Abhay Karabdika, immediately said, okay, yeah, we will do this. And uh, uh, Mrs. Sudhamurthy was there in the meeting. She is also a member of the advisory board. And she said, I will support it. And that's how we got started with the project. So, uh, you know, coming to the product itself, from what I understand, it right now is at a very nascent stage. Uh, there are uh, certain challenges that you still have to overcome before it can be tried in animals. So, uh, what are these things? Can you walk our uh, audience through that? Yeah. So, see, like this is, as I said, uh, that this is an egg and a chicken problem. That you, the reason you want to do an animal trial is to see whether it will be suitable for humans. Therefore, you cannot go for animal trial with a suboptimal product. You have to get the almost done product with the, for the animal trial. Um, and, uh, you know, like uh, there are a few aspects that need to be kept in mind that this is a device that will be implanted within the body. It will run 24-7 for the rest of your life. This is not a, um, you know, bridge treatment. This is actually a destination therapy. So it cannot make noise. Okay? If it makes noise, patient will go crazy. So, and the uh, device cannot generate a lot of heat. It cannot consume a lot of energy. Then you will have to change battery every now and then. 
So one solution for all these three problems is that the moving part, the motor, must not touch the static part, the stator. So this, so the motor really will float in the air within the close vicinity of the stator. And this is a technology referred to as maglev. And when you were talking about a maglev, uh, yeah. uh, maglev is short for magnetic, magnetic lev levitation. Yeah. So when you were talking about magnetic levitation, you have to also think that the patient may not be lying down all the time. Uh, the, he or she might want to sit upright, stand up, bend forward. And no matter what is the posture, the motor and the stator must maintain the relative position while it is floating. So that is like, you know, those many degrees of freedom has to be implemented. This is a real engineering challenge. That is the first challenge we are trying to negotiate. While we are doing that, in parallel, the other group, you uh, met uh, two of the material scientists in the team, they will have to ensure that the material, the, the surface designing that they are going to do will not uh, be foul for the blood cells. Two cells are of particular interest. One is uh, the red blood cells. They should not lyse or the process is called hemolysis. There should not be any hemolysis. Or the platelets, they cannot get activated. If platelets get activated, then uh, you know the, it can cause blood clot and that will have its own complications uh, and often fatal. So uh, once these are done with stationary blood, then we will be going to the animal. In the animal, we have to again uh, relook at hemolysis and the platelet activation, but we have to do something more. That is, our goal is that the, the chamber within which the pump is, which we call the volute casing, almost provides an environment like native blood vessel. Okay. So this is the technical term for this is called uh, endothelialization. Endothelial like blood cells, vessel cells are called endothelial cells. Endothelialization or neointima formation. So you need to have a particular surface texturing for neointima formation to happen. Uh, so that we will we will do the approximation now. But once the device is bed and we will do some preliminary animal trial to see if the new intima formation is happening, then we will send it for the final animal trial and most likely we will have to send it to a facility abroad and of course it will be expensive. So before that we want to be absolutely sure that we have a nearly done uh, device. In fact, uh, your lab also has uh, a, a device to sort of uh, simulate the, the action of the heart itself. Uh, so, uh, you know, tell us a little about that. I, I believe uh, that your team has also developed that. Yeah. yeah, so that is called a flow loop. A flow loop is basically a platform to assess the heart pump that we are developing. So, uh, you know, like uh, it will see at what uh, particular rotations per minute or RPM of the motor you get what pressure difference so that it can uh, predict, uh, you know, how much blood it will uh, throw out of the heart at a given point of time. And, uh, you know, that uh, flow loop, eventually we will embed it with a lot of sensors, you know, flow sensors, pressure sensors, uh, all of that to ensure that we get as much data about the functioning of the motor as possible before we go into the animal trial. So this itself is an engineering field. So, uh, you know, coming to uh, one of the questions that uh, that you started with, actually, you know, uh, the, the cost of the product, do you think, is there an estimate on how much that mi this might cost uh, if it was successful? Yeah, see, like, uh, that is a critical and difficult question to answer, and I want to be very, very careful here. I definitely would not want uh, your audience or people to, be, uh, to think that this will be a cheap product. No, it will not be a cheap product. This will be, like, if we are successful, it will be a product that is better than any LVAD currently available in the market. And I am not saying as a bragging uh, that, you know, we are better than anybody else. No, that's not the case. But the current LVADs, they were developed, you know, 10, 15 years back. The science has moved in the meantime. So there have been lessons learned. We will incorporate all of those in our device and that's why it will be better. So first is that I want to emphatically state that it will be a absolutely world-class, top-of-the-line product. Then comes the cost. Now you think about the cost of a device. What are the components in it? There will be 
you know, like an establishment cost, the cost of the uh, building, the land, all the machines that will be there for production, uh, the, you know, the electricity bill, AC, etc. There will be a, a manpower cost, you know, the, uh, the people that are employed in the production line, etc. There will be a bill of material cost, meaning the material that is actually going into the product. All of these costs will be there. So, bill of material cost, you can imagine that it will be uh, at par or slightly higher than what our Western counterparts will be spending. But the establishment cost, manpower cost will be significantly lower. That's one component. But the major component is the R&D cost. So you saw that we have a team of six fellows. Then there are four more students, uh, MTech PhD students associated with the uh, uh, project. Seven IIT Kanpur faculty members, three uh, adjunct faculty members, Think of their man hour, the collective cost. Then you think of, I showed you the state of the art facility where the fabrications have been done. That's a 20 crore rupee facility right there. More equipment are coming in. Then, uh, you know, like uh, all the material that we are getting, you know, uh, we are trying, testing, discarding, and uh, doing this whole thing all over again. Uh, the time that is being spent and all of that, you, you can easily imagine. Then the cost of animal trial. You can easily imagine that all of these combined, the R&D cost will run into at least 50 to 60 crore. Um, the, like the total cost might be around 100 crore. So if that is the cost, and if it were being done by a corporate entity, then they will not do it uh, for charity, right? They will have to realize their cost because they are driven by investors. So 100 crore rupee upfront cost, Say you want to recover it in five years with interest, then that cost has to be added to the cost of the product. In our case, that cost is zero. Why? Because as I told you that the fellows uh, fellowship is being paid for by alumni. Uh, there, there are more uh, funding from alumni, from corporate CSR houses, then from the government existing infrastructure of IIT Kanpur, which is coming to the team for free. Because of all of this, the R&D cost is zero. So in technical terms, then the amortization cost of R&D will not have to be added to the product. And that's where the product will be primarily uh, much more affordable than the products that are available in the market, uh, along with, you know, the, the reduced uh, establishment cost, manpower cost, etc. during the production. So we, we expect our aim is to make it available roughly at one tenth the cost, around ten lakh, and you know uh, with all your uh, you know goodwill, I hope we get there. Yeah, I hope so too. I really hope uh, you know with the dedication that the team is working and uh, all the effort that is going into this, I do hope that this uh, becomes successful and we do have a, a device that could possibly potentially save uh, uh, many lives. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir, for joining us and thank you so much for explaining this uh, project to us uh, with so much patience. Uh, once again, I thank our viewers for watching us and for joining us today. Uh, again, I'm Mohana Basu, Assistant Editor at The Print. If you like our work, do consider paying for a subscription to The Print. You can do so through the link in the description box below.